What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, Richard on Data. If you're new here, my name is Richard and this is the channel where we talk about data, data science, statistics, and programming. Subscribe for all kinds of content just like this and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. So we're going to talk about graphs today, because seriously, who doesn't love graphs and data visualization? Graphs and data visualization really are some of my absolute favorite things in the data science world, but there's a right and a wrong way to do them. So if we're going to do them at all, we might as well do them right. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the intuition around why you want to communicate with graphs in the first place, some of the kinds of graphs that you want to stay away from at all costs, and then some of the 2D graphs, which are generally good. Things like column or bar charts, histograms, box plots, line charts, scatter plots, and pie charts. Except for pie charts. Those are usually not any good at all. But we'll get to that later. First of all, the basis for using graphs in the first place is to communicate large amounts of information. We want to communicate more than just one single data point. And really, the only other way of doing this is with tables. Now, graphs are actually going to be worse than tables if you care about precise and exact values. In that case, you might just be overcomplicating things and you'll be better off just making a simple table. Similarly, if you have a bunch of different groups or different variables and they have all kinds of different units or different scales to them, tables are probably going to be your friend as well. However, if you're comparing sets of data, there's some kind of pattern or some kind of trend that you can communicate through that graph and you're not boggled down with all this stuff like different units or anything like that. Graphs are beautiful if they're done correctly and they will be your friend in that case. So without further ado, let's look at some examples of graphs which are just awful. So if you look at the example over here, this graph is just an unmitigated disaster. So the underlying data are actually pretty simple, but you can tell that they were going for a 3D graph for this just for cosmetic purposes. But it just makes it harder and more confusing for the end user, which is you, the reader. If you look at the values on the bottom right corner, you can't even really see where they stack up or tell what they really are. Now, the creators of this graph, it's maybe not as exciting, but they would have been much better off just doing a 2D graph, just doing like a column or a bar chart with some of the different categories side by side. Now we move on to an even worse example. So if we look over here, we've got a pie chart sort of thing, and already you shouldn't use a pie chart if there's any other options available to you, but this just takes it to the next level. You've got a 3D effect when you don't need one. It's not adding anything to the story behind the graph or communicating anything about the data, and then the size of the objects do not vary in proportion to the size of the actual data represented. And what is the never group? Is it the orange at the bottom? Is it the blue part? I couldn't tell you. There's a ton that goes into making a good graph versus a bad graph. That's a subject for its own video in and of itself. For this one, I just want to focus on types of graphs before we get into things like colors, scales, and things of that nature. I'll have a link to an article from Business Insider in the description of this video, which will include more examples of terrible graphs. But as a general rule, more complex is bad. Simpler graphs, almost without exception, are going to be better. You are not going to gain anything by trying to impress your reader with all these pretty visual effects. You're just making it more likely that you're going to confuse them. And if you think about packages like ggplot2 and R, they all operate through what's called a grammar of graphics framework. Now what this is, is it takes any kind of graph and it breaks it down into simple components. You have a data component, you have some kind of geometric object. So for a bar chart, that would be your bars. For a scatter plot, that would be your points. And then you have some kind of coordinate mapping system. You're mapping some variable to an x-axis, some variable to a y-axis. And honestly, this is the best kind of graph most of the time because they're simple and easy to understand. Now, there are absolutely instances of great 3D graphs. They're visually appealing, well-designed, easy to understand, appropriate. 
but generally, when possible, you want to go with the simpler 2D graph option. So I'm going to go through some simple examples of the graphs I mentioned earlier in this video. I'll go through each and describe the circumstances when that kind of graph is appropriate. Let's start off with column and bar charts. Here's a column chart. This is from the MT Cars data set in R. Column and bar charts are used for summarizing categorical data, typically by way of things like counts or percentages. Now if we flip this thing on its side, we'll have what's called a bar chart. We're summarizing the exact same data in a very similar type of way. All that we're doing is orienting things horizontally instead of vertically. Now you might be asking the question, when should you use a bar chart versus a column chart? Honestly, most of the time you can get away with either. They're relatively interchangeable. Having said that, there are some best principles and practices. A bar chart is going to be a little bit better in a few instances. So let's say you have a lot of really long labels. It can get really messy and jumbled together if you cluster them all together at the bottom. Whereas if you're reading them all on the left hand side, that just looks a lot better and a lot cleaner. Then similarly, if you have a lot of categories, it's going to look a little bit more natural seeing them all from top to bottom as opposed to having this graph which is just stretched really far from left to right. However, there are also instances in which a column chart will be better. So if you want to accentuate a large value, maybe sort your data from largest to smallest, reading that from left to right is going to look a little bit more natural than from top to bottom. Also, humans tend to see sequences from left to right. So if there's any kind of sequence to your data, which there kind of is here because I have gears three, four, and five, again, a column chart is gonna look a lot more intuitive and natural. You also have some flexibility here for extensions. Suppose if there's another variable that you wanna summarize. So here's an example over here. We're going to add another variable, carb. So now we have two variables on the x-axis. We have carb and we have gear, and we just put them side by side. Side. We can do this with bar or column charts and similarly we could create a stacked bar or stacked column chart if we have some kind of meaningful part to whole relationship. Next is histograms. Now these are very similar to column charts. The only difference is these are used for summarizing quantitative, that is continuous, rather than categorical data. And we're doing the same thing in each bin. We have some kind of count or you could summarize a percentage. These are also great for visualizing the shape of a distribution. Just be careful with the bin width here. So you'll want to use some kind of subject matter expertise. Suppose the values 20 to 25, 25 to 30, they're of particular interest to your stakeholder. You'll want to design the histogram to accentuate that. However, with the bin width, just be consistent with them. Don't have too many or too few bins. Also have them be the same size. Don't have a bin of width one, next is bin width five, then 10, then 20. That's just gonna get confusing. Just be consistent with them. Now it's common to see histograms smoothed out into what's called a density plot. Here's an example of the same data, same histogram turned into a density plot. This is pretty common. However, I would not recommend representing your data this way unless you have an absolute lot of it because what you end up doing is losing the ability to get precise and exact numbers by bin or by group. Next, box plots. Now these are probably my personal favorite. This is an example from the IRIS data set in R. And the reason I like these so much is because there's so much information packed into them. These are used for summarizing the distribution of a continuous variable. And specifically, we're going to get the minimum, the first quartile, the median, also known as the second quartile, the third quartile, and the maximum. And the ggplot2 package in R is really nice here because it's also giving us what points in that distribution are outliers. And as you can see here, it's really natural if you want to compare different groups to just put them side by side. You're comparing that same variable across different groups. So easy, so natural, so intuitive. Next, scatter plots. And here's another example from the IRIS data set from R. Now the idea with a scatter plot is you have two continuous variables 
a scatter plot is useful for visualizing the relationship between those two variables. It specifically focuses on the relationship. It's not particularly good at illustrating the distribution of either variable. I particularly love these because it can sometimes be helpful if you have a lot of different continuous variables to just create what's called a scatter plot matrix. So for every combination of variables, you'll have a little individual scatter plot. And these are really helpful. This shows up all the time in feature engineering and machine learning work because you can very quickly visualize relationships between tons and tons of different variables. Next up, line charts. Here's an example over here. These are pretty straightforward. All this is doing is you have a continuous variable and you are visualizing how that quantity changes over some kind of sequence. Almost always, that's just time. And it's also totally natural if you want. You don't have to have just one variable on the y-axis. You can communicate multiple variables in the same line chart. Just differentiate between them with colors and a legend. Simple, straightforward, intuitive. Last on the list is pie charts. Now these are usually terrible and something that you want to avoid at all costs. Now the idea with a pie chart is you can visualize how various categories contribute to a whole. In fact, with the example we gave earlier with bar and column charts, you had the various gear categories from the MT cars data. You could use a pie chart in that specific context. Here's the problem though. Your eyes cannot easily detect relative precise differences between multi-dimensional objects like pie slices in the same way that you can detect the differences in size between columns and bars. You can look at bars and columns side by side and say, yeah, that one's twice the size of that one. That is way harder to do with pie slices. See this example here. Notice that's really difficult to tell the relative difference in size between these categories. What if I told you that category three was three times the size of category five? You weren't able to tell that from looking at the graph, were you? Were you? Don't lie to me. So that covers all the core 2D graphs. And like anything else, when you have data or some information that you want visualized, you have to ask yourself the question of what the purpose of the analysis is in the first place. So first of all, do you have categorical or quantitative data? After that, do we want some summary counts? Do we want to see the actual distribution and get information about it? Do we want to detect a relationship? Do we want to detect a trend? Just basic questions like that. Let me know in the comments section down below what your favorite graph is. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time, Richard on data.